This is the case of pseudoexfoliation with a poorly dilating pupil, and you can see phacodenesis um, as I start to initiate the CCC with quite a lot of lateral displacement of the entire capsular bag. Uh, there are folds in the uh, anterior capsule itself showing lack of centrifugal zonular tension, making it very lax. And then I encounter difficulty uh, when I try to <coughs> rotate the nucleus. So in go the MST capsular tractors. This is version uh, 2, uh, which I had a part in uh, developing. They are shorter than version 1, so they give a little more support to the capsular excess edge, but they also support the peripheral equatorial uh, capsule. They are disposable, and you can see that they are double-armed, so that there is a loop at the tip so it won't perforate through the zonular, um, or rather the capsular fornix. But the loop is tighter so that it's harder for a CTR to inadvertently pass through uh, the open loop. Now they are anchoring the capsular bag and we have enough counterfixation so it allows me to rotate the nucleus. It's a relatively medium nucleus so horizontal chop is working fine here. The retractors are also pulling back the iris and they're supporting the lens in the AP direction. They're also restraining the uh, fornix of the capsule from being aspirated by the phaco tip, which might otherwise happen if the zonular peripheral tension is too weak. So uh, as we get toward the uh, last area, the last fragment or the epinucleus, I refill the capsule bag with a dispersive viscoelastic so that it won't be aspirated into the phaco tip. Why is that? You don't have the normal centrifugal zonular tension keeping it taut, and so it wants to follow, in this case, the cortex right into the INA tip. So I'm using bimanual INA to help uh, keep that port facing away from the posterior capsule but it really helps to put in a dispersive OVD to um, basically put the poster capsule on stretch. It's doing it by uh, filling the capsular bag rather than having the zonules stretching it out. And this allows me to separate again the cortex from the capsular bag. So we're going to put in the capsule tension ring now. I aim all the way to one side and I do this while the capsule retractors are still in place so we avoid uh, displacing the capsular bag uh, laterally with the opening of the ring. These disposable MST capsule retractors are then removed just like with uh, iris hooks and I'm going to plan on placing the three-piece uh, acrylic IOL in the sulcus uh, because of the diffuse zonular laxity. I don't want to trust the zonules themselves. In order to capture the optic, I determine that I think the rexus is a little too small, so I make a, a little oblique uh, cut. And using the MST uh, micro capsule forceps, this is the Seibel tip, I just enlarge the rexus a little bit. Uh, I then put dispersive OVD uh, in the sulcus uh, to create a, a, an easier entrance for this uh, lead haptic. This happens to be the J&J &J sensor. And uh, as this opens, I will then carefully place uh, each haptic under the iris so that it does not go into the capsular bag. This ultimately will be oriented in the horizontal meridian and will give me two-point fixation of the haptic against the ciliary body uh, in addition to just the zonules. But I do want to remove some of the viscoelastic that's in the bag because otherwise when I buttonhole the optic through the CCC it will trap the viscoelastic and that will cause forward displacement of the optic in a myopic error. Now I rotate the lens so that the haptics will more or less be in the horizontal uh, meridian. That way when there are lateral saccadic movements um, the haptic will bear some of that force, that inertial displacement force and then I capture the optic to prevent the, the IOL from rotating or decentering and it also prevents contraction of the CCC and then I don't have to adjust the IOL power uh, and then I'm just checking to make sure that the optic is in the bag, the two haptics are outside of the bag and this is 
uh, the way that I prefer to fixate um, using the capsular bag uh, when there's diffuse zonulopathy. Uh, the patient did have uh, glaucoma. In this case, I placed a classic eye stent. This is before the availability of the eye stent inject or the hydrus um, from Ivantis. Uh, and uh, then uh, the, uh, the case is done and uh, the um, OVD is uh, finally removed.